Hey guys, welcome back to Technological Lounge. My name is Keith, and today we're going to be installing Docker on a Raspberry Pi so that we can start running some of those cool services that Docker offers, like your own web page, maybe some home automation tools, your own VPN service, your own personal cloud, and even maybe a Minecraft server if you're a nerd. But we're also going to be installing Docker Compose so that we can do some more robust things with Docker in the future, and also actually deploying two containers real quickly so you can just test to make sure that your Docker is working after you get it all set up. Now, this video follows a series of videos. I have of me installing Diet Pi on a Raspberry Pi and then setting up Docker so that I can get this thing up and running for my home lab. So make sure you check out those previous videos. I'll link those up above as well. And if you actually learned something from this video or find it helpful, definitely make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm going to be giving away an orange pie to one lucky subscriber once I hit 100 subs. I'm getting pretty close, so uh, you definitely want to make sure you subscribe. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into installing Docker. Let's go ahead and cover what Docker is, just in case you're not familiar with it. I'll leave a link down below to uh, skip ahead if you're already familiar with Docker and you just want to go ahead and get into the install. But if you're a real one, you'll probably stick around. Anyway, so what is Docker? So Docker is a software that you essentially install on top of uh, some sort of operating system, generally Linux, or in this case, your Raspberry Pi that's probably running Diet Pi or Raspbian OS. And essentially, it manages those applications that you might have. Uh, specifically stuff like your web servers or any of the stuff I mentioned earlier and it manages those applications and segments them into something that we call containers. Now what are containers? So containers are little mini virtual instances of an application that include all the stuff that these applications need to run. Sometimes it might be some sort of library like a Python library or any other additional little software that that application needs to run without the need to have an entire operating system installed for that thing to run on top of. Now this minimizes the amount of physical resources like the CPU and RAM needed because we're not having to virtualize an entire operating system like we traditionally used to have to do. And the cool thing about this is we can actually segregate these applications so that they don't talk with anything else or they only talk exactly what they need to or we can actually use Docker Compose to have these containers all work together so that they can manage an increased load and load balance traffic when one of the services begins to receive more load than it's expected. Why would we want to do something like that? Well, let's say we have some sort of web server, right? And we don't want to use too many resources when we don't have a lot of traffic. So we might only have one container, right? Well, let's say it's Black Friday. We run some sort of company that sells stuff. Well, on Black Friday, we might receive a whole bunch more traffic. And what Docker Compose can do is spin up additional containers so that they all work together and manage that increased load. And when they're not needed, they get torn down and we go back to using just what we need so that we're not wasting resources. And let me show you what a quick setup of Docker looks like versus what it does look like with traditional methods. So you can see why Docker is so cool and actually taking over the market. All right, so traditionally before when we ran services, we would usually do something like this. We'd have a physical server, and this is like actually one of the servers that you would see in some sort of data center, right? Server. And on top of that, we would run an application or some software called a hypervisor. And what this is, is essentially, it's a piece of software that virtualizes everything so that we can install operating systems on top of it. It virtualizes the hardware, it virtualizes the software and everything that's gonna run on top of it. So we could say hypervisor, it would be something maybe like ESXi, um, VMware's ESXi. If you're not familiar with that, I'll be making a video on that in the future. But anyways, then this manages those oper those virtual operating systems that we install on top of it. So we might install something like a Windows server. Win. And we might install something like a Linux server. Or many other things. And then on top of those virtual machines, these are virtual machines, we would go ahead and install our applications. So maybe an app. Now that's all cool and dandy, but the thing about this is when we're virtualizing these operating systems, these uh, Linux and Windows virtual machines, we're actually also virtualizing hardware, meaning we're making the operating system think it has its own physical network interface card. It has its own display adapter. And this actually increases the amount of physical load that we're putting on the server, meaning the physical server actually has to work harder to virtualize these things. Well, with Docker, we actually get rid of a lot of that. So let me show you what Docker does. So with Docker, we have that same physical server. And on top of that, we install Docker. And Docker manages the containers, which include our apps inside of it, right? So then we have an app. 
and maybe another app. And that's it. Docker manages installing the apps on top of it. It goes ahead and obfuscates the entire physical environment under it. The app only gets what it needs. It doesn't get a full operating system. It only gets the dependencies and libraries and software that it needs to run, but nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't get any additional resources, so we're not consuming nearly as many resources as we traditionally would be with a traditional method of using a virtual machine with maybe some sort of hypervisor on top of it, like VMware's ESXi. Now you're gonna wanna learn Docker if you're getting into the IT career field, and that's because it's being used all over the place. So we're moving away from those traditional servers with hypervisors installing operating systems and then apps and we're all just moving towards some sort of containerized software whether it be docker kubernetes or anything else and if you want to get in now you're definitely going to need to know docker especially if you want to become some sort of developer or devops engineer or even an infrastructure engineer i just transitioned from a job where i was a network engineer and i actually had to know docker myself as well as all my colleagues if you want to get into the field and be competitive you're going to need to know docker and you're going to need to know containerized software but anyways that's enough about docker let's actually go ahead and get into installing it on our raspberry pi Alrighty, so let's actually go ahead and get into installing Docker. And if you're one of those people that skipped ahead in my video, I'm disappointed in you and I'm watching you. All right, anyways. Alrighty, so I'm gonna switch over to my desktop. Uh, let's go ahead and minimize that for now. All right, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and connect to your Raspberry Pi. You can either connect to it with a keyboard video and a mouse or you can SSH over to it. And if you don't know how to do that, check out my previous video. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use PowerShell. So I am using SSH root at the IP address of the device. And then I'm gonna log in. And from here, the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is actually update your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we're going to use this command here. And what this is doing is just going ahead and actually updating your device so that everything's up to date prior to us actually installing Docker. All right, so I didn't have any updates you might, which might take a little bit longer. But anyways, the next step is to actually reach out to testdocker.com and pull down Docker and it'll actually run a script for you. Now Docker does all this for you. You don't have to worry about it. Obviously, if you'd like to actually check out the code, you can actually go to that website and I'll leave a link down for that below. But this is just gonna run it directly from docker.com, which is great. You don't have to do anything. And that's just one command. That's gonna be this one here. We're curl which means we're actually reaching out via HTTP and requesting a specific page using a get message. And we've got a few different switches in here as well, like, oh, like, oh, damn, I don't know what that actually means. But anyways, go ahead and just copy this and it'll install. Five minutes later. Now, once that script is complete, you technically have Docker installed and you should have some sort of results like this in my PowerShell screen. Now, one thing you're going to want to know is that Docker actually created a Docker group. And if you don't want to use your root account, uh, you're going to need to add whatever account that you're using to manage Docker to that Docker group. And uh, you can see that Docker group if you do a cat etc slash group and you're going to see right down here that we actually have that docker group so make sure you add your account to that and to do that we'll actually run this command docker and then you just add your account to it so for me i'll just put the diet pie account in there and that's it you've added the account to the docker group and you can actually manage docker with that however i'm just going to be using the root account just to make it easy for this process all right so technically that's it you've installed docker you added a user to the docker group and you can start managing docker but obviously if you're watching this how to you might not be too familiar with it so we're actually going to go ahead and install docker compose as well as install your first container which is actually going to be portainer which is a graphical user interface a web page that you can actually pull up to manage docker so that you don't have to run everything through the cli However, I'm also gonna show you some cool CLI command you can use to manage Docker as well. Now, this is all pretty simple. It's basically just one line or commands, just like we just did. So make sure you follow along with this as well. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and install Docker Compose because that's actually gonna be something we use later on in the future to manage apps that span across several containers. And to use that, you actually have to install Python. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're gonna run these following commands. And what this is doing is just reaching out uh, to grab the Python libraries for your Raspberry Pi so that you can actually run Python scripts and reach out to libraries that may be needed for other things other than Docker Compose. And we're going to run these following scripts as well. And what this is doing is essentially installing Python. First, it's reaching out to try and pull uh, Python down, and then it's actually going to go ahead and install it as well. It's going to warn you that it's going to take about 54 megabytes of space. Just go ahead and confirm yes. You should have enough space for that especially if this is a brand new uh, install. All right, and then we're gonna run this following command, which installs pip, which is essentially the package and library installer used for Python to pull down different libraries and stuff like that that you might need in the future with Python. 
And just in case it happens to you, when I was doing that previous command, it took a little bit and it actually stalled on me. I just did control C to back out and then just ran that command again, just to make sure that the package is installed and it worked out fine for me. So just in case you get stuck there for a little bit, make sure you go ahead and try that. So now that we've got Python installed, now we're actually gonna go ahead and install Docker Compose. So we'll go ahead and run this command here. And it's going to inform us that it's going to take up about six megabytes of data. So that's fine. Go ahead and just press yes and get it all installed. And all right, Docker Compose is installed. It was that easy. We're not going to do much more with Docker Compose in this video. That'll be in following videos. But now let's go ahead and actually enable Docker. So we're going to go ahead and run this command. And this is essentially going to enable the Docker service. And it looks like my uh, CLI had some issues. So let's run that again just to make sure that it actually enabled. And we're good to go. We have it enabled. And now we're going to go ahead and actually deploy a container. We're just going to do the hello world one, which is uh, just a, basically a container that, that just pulls some text saying hello world. And this is going to just verify that your Docker setup is correct and that it's able to actually deploy containers successfully. So we'll go ahead and run this. And so essentially what it's going to do is look to see if it has that hello world image locally and if it doesn't it's going to go ahead and reach out for it and it looks like we're good hello from docker we have that so now let's go ahead and install portainer which is going to be the container that's going to have the service we're able to use uh, to actually manage docker with a gui uh, web page so we'll go ahead and create a partition which is basically just a storage area for it and we went ahead and created that volume. And so that's where portainer is actually going to store all of its contents. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and run this long command here. We're just going to reach out for that portainer image, which is essentially a template for that container that we're going to deploy inside of our own Docker deployment. And we're going to map port 8000 on the host to port 8000 on the actual container itself. And it's also going to do that with port 9443 as well. If you don't know what all that means, essentially when you're reaching out to Docker via its IP, you'll just put a colon and put this port number at the end. And that's going to go ahead and actually reach out to this portainer container inside of Docker. We're just mapping that. So we'll go ahead and run this. So it wasn't able to find that image locally, of course. So you're going to need internet connection because it's going to reach out to the internet and actually try and pull that image down. And that's what it's doing now. Okay, so now that portainer is actually installed, we're going to run this command, docker ps. And this is going to show us the current containers that are running. Uh, specifically, we have portainer here. It's actually running. And then we can actually do a docker ps a to see all containers that are currently installed on the docker host itself, whether they're running or not. So you can see here the hello world one. Uh, the initial one we, we deployed, it actually stopped afterwards, uh, but the portainer is still running. And now we're actually going to test that we can reach out to portainer over the GUI interface. So we're going to pull up an Internet Explorer page, pull up an edge, and then we're going to type in the following HTTPS. And then you're going to go ahead and actually put in your own IP address of your Docker host. This is mine. And then put a colon followed by port 9443. And you're probably gonna get a certificate error, that's fine, just click advance and click continue. And look at that, you're in portainer. And if this is your first time getting there, it's gonna ask you to set up a password for your admin account. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Hit create user, and that's it, you're in portainer. Now you can actually go to home. Right now we have two containers here. We have two images, which are the portainer and hello world. And then we actually have our two containers here, which are Portainer right here and Hello World, which is actually exited. And obviously Portainer is running since we're interacting with it via GUI. But that's it. We verified Portainer's up. Now I want to go back to the CLI and uh, just give you a few helpful commands that you might want to know in case you're interacting with Docker and not using the Portainer GUI. Let's go back here. We're back on CLI. All right, so we've got a few commands here. You can see on the right hand side. Uh, so we've got Docker Run, which you actually use to install Portainer and Hello World. It's essentially going to try and reach out locally first to see if you have the image you're trying to install. And then if not, it'll try and reach out to the internet and pull that same image and then start the installation of it. You've also got Docker Pool, which will actually pull the image down, but not actually install it. You've also got Docker PS, and that's one we actually looked at earlier, which you can see the status of your containers. And these are just going to show you the ones that are running. You can do a Docker PS A, which will show you all of them, whether they're running or not. You also have Docker Stop and Start along with the container ID, and that's going to essentially allow you to stop or start your different containers. We're going to go ahead and do that on Portainer, actually. So you can see now that we, we can currently reach Portainer. I can refresh and I'm still logged in. However, we're actually going to go ahead and stop it real quick. So let's do that. So do a Docker stop and then copy that uh, that ID for the container, which is this one for Portainer. And now when I do a Docker PS, 
you see nothing's running portainer's no longer running and if i do a refresh on it i can't reach it we'll go ahead and restart that and you can also remove containers as well you utilizing the docker rm command here which will remove the container and uninstall it. But that's about it. Those are just a few useful commands and there are many more you can actually research on the Docker webpage and I'll provide a link with that below. But anyways, that's it. That's how you install Docker on a Raspberry Pi. Definitely make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Drop a sub because when I hit 100 subs, I'll be giving away an orange pie. I appreciate your support and I'll see you guys around. Peace.